نحمد ونسلی علی رسول الکریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزير من اخلي اللهم فكهنا في الدين اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم ارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امین ثم امین السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ٹوڈے وی ول اسٹارٹ آ ڈسکشن ود ورس ایٹی تھری آف سورت البقرا و از اخذنا میساق بنی اسرا ایلا لا تعبدون الا اللہ و بل والدین اقسان و دل قربا و الیتاما و المساکین و قول الناس حسن و عقیم السلاتا و آت الزکاتا سم تولیتم الا قلیلا منقم و انتم معرزون اللہ سیز And recall when we took the covenant from the children of Israel, enjoining upon them, do not worship Allah, and to parents do good, and to relatives, orphans, and the needy, and speak to people good words, and establish prayer, and give zakah. Then you turned away, except a few of you, And you were refusing. In our last session, we talked about, started talking about the verse number 83 of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, talked about the Ten Commandments of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And we discussed the first commandment, which is, Obviously, the first article of faith and the first right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on all bondsmen is what? The belief and faith in oneness of Allah. After Allah's right, next what? Series of rights of the fellow beings. Even before Akimus Salata wa Atu Zakata comes the right of the fellow beings. Remember, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his rights, but he will not forgive the rights of the fellow beings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with sensitivity about the rights of all those around us. And talking about the rights of fellow beings, the top of the line, immediately after the right of Allah is the right of whom? is the right of the parents. As Allah says, وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Now I would want you to all understand and relate that we need to know that when Allah is explaining the rights of parents and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is emphasizing the rights and highlighting the rights of parents, we need to know who around us are coming in this relationship. Who are our parents? Our mother and the father, then that is our actual mother and the father, then our maternal or paternal grandparents, and then obviously great-grandparents, and then our mother-in-law and father-in-law also come up in the same category. There is a Hassan Hadith which is reported by the Prophet Wasallam. It is in the books other than the six books of a Hadith, but it is a Hassan Hadith that Prophet Wasallam talked to one of his companions and said, you have three fathers. One is your real father, one is your wife's father, and third is the teacher who taught you. So, 
for a husband the wives the wife's father and the mother and for the wife the husband's father and the mother also come up to the level of her own or his own father and the mother i always say and i always believe that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been very kind and gracious before marriage if we had two feet under under which our paradise was and we had one door to jannah our father then after marriage these are going to multiply by two lucky is the one who avails and unlucky and ill fate is the one who stays deprived and very pathetically very poorly pathetically i i hear some scholars saying that for her or her parents and for him or his parents and i hear women saying very proudly my parents are for me my mom my dad for me and your dad and your mom for you really dividing parents do you divide the bounties and the blessings of allah no then how come we dividing our parents and people very very aggressively come up and say there is islam in quran it is not the woman is not supposed to look after the in laws there's no concept really how can we deprive ourselves of all these bounties of all these rewards now the next thing which i would definitely want to sum up and to highlight that obviously feeling the rights of the parents very clearly now how are we supposed to behave and relate to our mannerism i'll be going point wise number 1 respect and regard we need to respect them we need to regard Hazrat Abu Huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu saw a young man with an old man and he asked the old man that is he your father and then he gave three pieces of advice he said look never call him by his name never walk in front of him and let him have a seat before you this is what this is an advice of respect for the parents the second point humbleness and being humane in front of the parents Allah says in Quran wahfis lahuma junah dhulli min ar-rahma lower down lower down your shoulders even in front of your parents in respect don't stand arrogantly don't talk arrogantly be humbled and and I'll ask all of you how how can children be arrogant in front of their parents how can we proud in front of our parents what we are what we are today where we are today what we have achieved gained whatever we reached in our lives is obviously obviously no doubt because of the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but then Allah with his blessings had made it all possible for us because of the struggle the effort the help the guidance the love and the support of our dear parents so how can we think about being arrogant in front of them i just narrated about hazrat haris bin noman he was so humble he used to low down his gaze and he used to low down his head and he used to cross his hands and fold his arms and he never used to speak loud his mom was old she was weak she used to like mumble in his mouth and there were many times he couldn't understand what she was mumbling but he never used to shout at her he would never used to call her bad words oh mom speak loud oh mom Why are you mumbling? No. She he just used to keep quiet and he used to go out and then going in the courtyard he used to ask his wife what was mom saying? So we need to be humble. 
the third point patience and tolerance allah says in verse number 23 of surah bani israel fala taqul lahuma uff fala tanharhuma don't even say ah and don't scold them they are old they are weak they'll forget at times they can't hear they can't speak they can't express they cannot walk they cannot remember the food might spill they might spill water they might just become like little children but just remember how how tolerant they were when we were children when we forgot when we could not speak when we could not walk and when we used to spill when we could not remember how they used to hold our finger and make us learn how to walk how they hurt how they got hold of my hand and taught me how to write so remember how tolerant they were to us when we were children and also think back how tolerant we are to our own children so stay patient stay cool and be tolerant the fourth point i'm going point wise i won't want any one of us to miss any one of these points we don't going to get away with this the fourth point be kind and merciful and soft and polite to them the way we talk the way you talk to them the way you lift them up the way you feed them the way you look at them the way you deal with them they are they are weak they are sick their bodies are already hurting and aching don't cheer them don't give them jolting they are dependent on you be soft be polite be merciful and be very very kind Allah is not kind to them who is not kind. Allah will not be merciful on them who is not who not merciful. Number 5 look after their requirements, their needs and care for their feelings and their desires and try to fulfill their wishes. They fulfilled our wishes. They they completed our requirements. they were sensitive about our desires hazrat imam zainul abidin he was hasan bin ali he, he had a mother who was widowed and she was old and she was sick and she was weak and she was also semi blind and you know what the son used to do all the way from his workplace he used to walk back to his house to have lunch with his mother and there were two or three days when one of his friends accompanied him and the friends he observed that imam zainul abidin used to wait for his mother to eat and when she used to finish or when she used to stop eating then only he used to eat and the friend friend asked him I don't understand. You come all the way walking back rushing, hurrying that I want to go and have lunch with my mother and when you come here you don't eat with her and you let her eat and then you eat. Imam Zainul Abidin said, "My friends, why must it be so hard for you to understand and comprehend? The matter is that I don't eat with her simply because I'm afraid that I might take a piece of meat which she likes." and so i let her eat first and then i eat the remaining food afterwards sixth serve them do service to them attend to them like like the leader of the women of jannah hazrat fatima radhiyallahu ta'ala anha served her father she used to wash his clothes she used to wash his hair she used to comb them she used to oil them and then Hazrat Awais Karani radiyallahu uh, rahmatullahi alayhi he was a tabi 
He was not awarded the level of Sahaba Ikram, although he embraced Islam in the life of the Prophet wasallam. But he could not come to meet and to be in the company of the Prophet wasallam. So that is why he is he was not a Sahaba and he was not amongst the companions of the Prophet wasallam. And despite accepting Islam, he just did not come and visit the Prophet ﷺ for the mere, mere reason that he was busy looking after his old debilitated mom. And you know what? He even performed Hajj after the death of his mother. But he has been given the, the name of Khairu Tabayin, the best of Tabayin. Okay, now the seventh point, take out time for them. Take out time for your parents. You don't know. Believe you me. Believe you me. You just don't know how much time is left. And you don't know how soon they will depart and how quickly they will depart. Then leaving you behind, regretting and remembering the days when you could give them time. Give them time. Give them time and attention when you have time and when you have your parents. Prophet has is promised in a Sahih Hadith that when any one of you, when any one of you lovingly looks at the face of her mother, of his or her mother, then all your sins will be forgiven. And in other hadith, the Prophet says, then he will be he will be awarded with the reward of a Hajj Mabarur, the person who is who is lovingly glancing or looking at the face of his or her mother, then the person will be rewarded by reward of a hajj mabrur sitting at your home and looking at your mother or mother-in-law you know that is the difficult part of the story you will be rewarded by hajj mabrur prophet said this and the companions asked what if we look again <coughs> prophet said you will be rewarded with another reward again and then another sahih hadith prophet said that when children sit with their old parents to entertain them then before they get up all their sins will be forgiven so give them time give them attention talk to them and then then I would I would urge you I would request you to express to express your love to talk about how how much you love them how much you care for them, how important they are for you. Demonstrate your love, exhibit your love. Kiss them, kiss them, kiss them on the forehead, kiss them on their hands, hug them, sit with them, lie down with your mom, express your love. Remember they used to hold you close? Remember the way they used to cuddle you? Remember the way they used to kiss you and hug you? They need this now. They need this now. They do not need the service of your maid servants or your men servants or your male nurses or your female nurses you brought with your money or you've hired with your money for their service and looking after. No, they want your hands. They want your your body to be cuddled with these old parents are like children and then the eighth point of exhibiting your love and the best thing the ninth point is pray for them pray for them as much as you can in the verse number 24 of Surah Bani Israel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us the prayer as well. Qul, say, Rabbir hamhuma kama rabbayani sahira. O Allah, be kind to them the way that they were kind to me when I was a child. 
when I needed their kindness, when I couldn't eat, when I couldn't sleep, when I couldn't read, when I couldn't walk, when I could understand, when I couldn't just survive without their kindness and they were kind to me, be kind to them. Remember this, remember this dua of the Quran and keep it in the tashahud of your salah. That is before you say salah, in the last part of your tashahud, keep it in your salah. May your parents be alive and may, may have they passed on. It is a beautiful, it is a beautiful supplication which we can all make for our parents. And then we all need to relate to the rights of the parents even after the death of the parents. One of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ asked him the issue that his parents had passed off and what right does what right do they still hold on him? Hazrat Abu Usaid Sa'adi radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Abu Da'ud and Ibn Majah that the Prophet sallallahu was sitting with his companions and a person came and he was from the tribe of Banu Salma the messenger says uh, the narrator says and he said that O oh, messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are there some rights of my parents on me which I have to fulfill even after they have died? That is, my parents have died. Okay, I was sensitive enough that I was I ha I was duty bound and it was obligatory for me to sensitively pay their rights as long as they were alive. But now that they have passed away and they have died, are there still some rights of my parents which I have to fulfill? These were the people who were sensitive, extremely sensitive about the rights of their fellow beings. Prophet said he told him three rights. He said, pray for mercy and forgiveness on their behalf. The first right of the parents who are deceased is to pray for their mercy and forgiveness. Second, to fulfill to fulfill the rightful will or the bequest they may have made. We talked about it in the orders of inheritance that it is allowed to make will or bequest of one's one third of the property. So if parents have made a rightful or a righteous will, then it is the duty of the parent, children after the departing of the parents or after the death of the parents that they fulfill that will or the bequest they made and to pay due regards to the relations of kin and third to be and fourth to be respectful to their friends so these are the four points prophet sallallahu said i i'm sorry i said three previously there are four things to pray for them to uh, complete or fulfill their righteous will and to be nice and generous and kind to the relations to their relations of the kin and to be respectful to the friends and then being praying for the parents what is the merit of praying for the deceased parents has that anas rosiyallahu ta'ala and who lets us know a very big promise of the prophet sallallahu and it is a very big hope for all the children as well Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in a Sahih Hadith that Prophet sallallahu said that it happens sometime that the parents of a person or one of them dies and he has been disobedient to the parents. You know, parents are those around us whose rights we cannot repay. We just cannot repay. And humans are but to err and there are so so many chances that we might have been disobedient to them so we all very intensely need to listen to this that there one of the parents has has died and he has been disobedient to them in their lifetime and hence incurred their displeasure but after their death if this child was disobedient after their death if he prays to Allah with a sincere heart to have mercy on them and to forgive them their sins 
then Allah will thereupon declare the disobedient child as an obedient child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand, comprehend, relate, remember and dutifully pay all the rights of our living or our deceased parents. Allah forgive our shortcomings, forgive the shortfalls, forgive all which we wronged, forgive all we said wrong, forgive when we hurted them, forgive when we were rude to them, forgive when we displeased them, forgive when we were disrespectful to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us humbled in front of them, make us respectful, make us obedient, make us kind, make us merciful. Let us spend our time, let us spend our time on them, help us give, give them love, guide us to show our affection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all the children among the children who, who can serve their who can serve their parents kindly politely gently help us look after their requirements guide us guide us to fulfill their wishes allah help us be patient and be tolerant allah help us respect them and regard them allah make us one of them who 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 very who continuously be praying for our parents and accept all our prayers for our parents and accept all their prayers for us and make us worthy of their prayers. I would end my talk by the words. Let's learn them all and remember these words and recite them in your salah. I would say again, Rabbirhamhuma kama rabbayani sagheera Rabbirham huma kama rabbayani sagheera Rabbirham huma kama rabbayani sagheera And for all whose parents have departed Allahumma gfir lahum Allahumma gfir lahum Allahumma gfir lahum Warham hum Warham hum Wa'afihim Wa'afihim وَآفِهِمْ وَأَكْرِمْ نُزُلَهُمْ وَأَكْرِمْ نُزُلَهُمْ وَأَكْرِمْ نُزُلَهُمْ اللَّهُمَّ حَاسِبْهُمْ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا اللَّهُمَّ حَاسِبْهُمْ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا اللَّهُمَّ حَاسِبْهُمْ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا اللَّهُمَّ أَدْخِلْهُمْ جَنَّةَ مَعَ الْأَبْرَارِ اللهم أدخلهم جنة مع الأبرار اللهم أدخلهم جنة مع الأبرار ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا لا تزيع قلوبنا ربنا لا تزيع قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك الرحمة إنك أنت الوهاب سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين سم آمين إن شاء الله Tomorrow we will uh, continue the discussion of verse number 36 of Surah An-Nisa and we will be talking about Wabithil Qurba, the relations of kin, wal yatama wal masakin, the orphans and the poor and the needy. So the underprivileged class of the society and our relatives and relations of kin. This inshallah again is a very important topic and I would uh, request all of you to advise to invite as many as you can to come and watch our lecture live 
or uh, I would also request all of you to share the lecture of uh, today uh, of Bil Walidayni Ikhsana with as many as you can so that you can help people relate the rights of their parents in today's society as people are really, children are really uh, mistreating and being very ill tampered to their parents. So uh, if you want your children to be obedient to you and you want your daughter-in-laws and your son-in-laws and you yourself want to be uh, doing the same then uh, obviously you can share the lectures which are coming to you uh, in your on your whatsapp groups and as well on your profiles and the purpose of all this when i request you is to help us spread the teachings of islam Zakallah khairun kasira fi amanillah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh